So Margo, you mentioned that sometimes people have too much tension in their body. And then when they have too much tension, their body can't actually expand to absorb the charge. So what do you do in your tantric practices? What do you teach people as a way of dealing with that? Well, we teach about what is armoring, you know, what is collecting tension in the fascia around the musculature, which holds us in certain, you know, fixed position and how to liberate that. We dance wildly. We have morning active dynamic meditation so that people can release whatever extra negative emotions they might have. Uh, we have massage. We have so many practices that we do so that people can begin to feel at ease in their body, at ease with each other. We change partners in the group, not for sexual interaction. Anyway, there is no sexual interaction in my group room. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't happen. We're not an orgiastic uh, situation here or a lovemaking club. We're learning uh, a mystical dimension that includes and incorporates, you know, sexual energy within it. So what I do, I can use bioenergetics, which is, you know, activate the charge and activate the charge more and more and more until there needs to be a release. You can't do it otherwise. And that release can be through the voice, through the emotions, you know, through the letting go, through the dance, through, you know, using your voice. So assaulting your partner and telling him he's a schmuck because you're beating a pillow, you're not beating the partner. And the partner re responds, well, you're a schmuck too. And then you beat the pillow too. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, when you're in a group, you drop your persona and you accept to let it go, to let it out, to be wild. And this is a good thing, you know, because we all have a wild self inside of us. And society doesn't allow us to express it so much. That's why there is such a success in America for baseball uh, matches. You know, everybody goes to it because that's a chance where you can scream and you can be wild. And you transpose the wildness in the persona of the players. And what is being played with? The ball. <laughs> you know, that's in itself quite a symbol, isn't it? Yeah, and so we play back and forth with this ball between people. Well, that's similar in my work because I also use bioenergetics, which is using the life force to dissolve the body armor. Yeah. And that body armor comes from past negative experiences, traumas, issues of childhood, in which we locked up against the charge. Like yes. Maybe we were told, be quiet, sit still. I don't want to hear your crying yes. anymore. I don't want to hear you yelling. And so we had to learn to sit on our charge. Yes. And that re involves a muscular contraction. Yes. And then the muscular contraction becomes a habit that you don't even feel anymore. Yes. Because you've done it all your life. But the thing that happens when you start breathing or you start engaging sexually and the charge level comes up, it pushes up against, against. that holding yes. that is the habit. And the charge says... I want you to let go. And the holding says, oh, no, you don't. Yes, exactly. And the charge says, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and the <laughs> habit of holding says, oh, no, you don't. And they go back and forth. And it can often look like a trembling. Yes, yes. A streaming. As the charge a releases. Yes. The spanda, the expansion and contraction of the universe. And I find that if you allow that trembling to come up and be felt and stay with it and continue your breathing or continue your movement, the trembling gets from a fine tremor to bigger and bigger and bigger until it finally goes, ha. Yeah, and it's an orgasm. And it releases. Yeah. yeah. It's an orgasm whether it's sexual or not. Like yes. it might be finally someone yells or finally yeah. they cry yeah. or, you know, it could be an orgasm in any chakra. Yeah, it's a beautiful way of saying it. And it's very important that we practice this independently of the sexual context. So that when we feel the charge at the moment of lovemaking, we have a free channel. We have open chakras that we can circulate the energy through. And then our sexual orgasm is much more expanded and much more satisfying. And because that old traumatic charge is not in the way anymore. Right. And once you clear it out, you make room for the more pleasurable charge in your body. Yes. And that's what we want. Yes. Yes, so actually now we're talking about sexual charge and we're talking about moving energy through the chakras. And so for me, one of the ways of approaching this is to practice something that I call sexual breathing. And it's very powerful. It, it looks a little strange in the beginning when you hear about it for the first time, 
but it's very powerful practice. And so the way it goes is like this. You could practice it, you know, with us or you could try it at home. You imagine that you have, uh, you know, that you're drinking uh, a soda through your sexual center. So you imagine that prana, life energy charge is entering through your sex and that you're tightening your sexual muscles and you're like, like you would tighten your mouth around a straw when you want to inhale uh, your drink, you're tightening your sexual muscles and you're pulling the energy up to your heart chakra or to your heart center. So you go like this. Then you hold it there for a minute, uh, no, for 30 seconds or 20 seconds, and then you release it by opening your sexual muscles, relaxing them completely, and exhaling from your heart down into your sex and from your sex out towards your partner. So both people synchronized are doing this at the same time. So they're even holding maybe their root chakra or their sex center with one hand and they're moving the energy up with the other hand. So I'm going, tighten the muscles, pull the energy up and then relax the muscles and let the energy go down and out my sex towards my partner. The partner does the same thing and after a while you invert the breath. So one is inhaling and the other one and, and holds it there for, for one go and then the other one is exhaling. And then you continue inverted. I inhale towards you and you inhale me in you. You exhale towards me and I inhale you in me. So both partners are taking each other's sexual energy through their sex up to their heart, holding it there for a second and then releasing it, relaxing their sex and opening up to the other. So that is called sexual breathing and it's very well described in my book, The Art of Sexual Ecstasy. And, you know, I'm sure that you have many such practices in your chakra yoga work and that doing the chakra yoga work that Anodea describes in her book by the same title would definitely enhance your experience of sexual breathing. Well, yes, I do have a practice in my book that involves breathing into each chakra and there's a movement for each breath. You breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So oh, it's yeah. a circular breathing and you have a body movement for each chakra and you can just feel the charge build up in your body and then finally you blast it out the top. Yeah. And it leaves you just fully charged and alive and, and feeling your body and that would be a great practice before sexuality for the two people to do together so all their chakras are lit up yes. even before they start to come together. Yes, 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 absolutely. I would say we have to teach together one of these days because ah, it be. sounds very attractive what you're talking about and makes total sense. And we, have, we need to add that when, when you have arrived at the totally full charge up to the crown chakra, it's important to come back down. Yes. I say come back down through your central channel, which is another thing we developed that I call the inner flute, and you come back down all the way to your root, to your feet, because if you're not grounded, you can't fly away. And you, in order to fly away, you need strong roots. So that's one thing to remember. Plus, if you just stay high up there, yeah, you, you travel the universe, it's wonderful, you're in higher dimensions, but if you have too much energy up there and it doesn't go somewhere, you could also have a headache. So important to let it fly through your crown chakra into the sky or bring it back down through your central channel to your roots. Well, I couldn't agree with that more because I teach about raising energy up the chakras to higher consciousness. But what do we do with that higher consciousness? We're supposed to bring it back down into our vision yeah. into our communication, yes. into our heart, to empower ourselves to move things into place and to manifest yes. a beautiful vision of heaven on earth. Yes. I think our whole journey to higher consciousness is so that we can bring that consciousness down and make a difference in the world through who we are. Yes. It's how we show up. It's not to leave. It's to be fully embodied divine creatures. Yes, so you have to actualize your awakening. And this is the most difficult thing, by the way. It is. Because the divine quality, I'll give you an example. The divine, one of the divine qualities every master talks about is the quality of patience, right? <laughs> I'm the most impatient person in the world. 
This is my weak weakest point. Can you hurry point. up and explain that? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is my weakest point. And so I'm working on it every day. And we all are supposed to work on our, you know, difficulty or on our egoic tension. And so every day we have an opportunity to choose between am I now going to be impatient and push the process or I'm going to take a deep breath, wait and see what happens. And when I wait and see what happens, I learned a lot. I learned all sorts of things, which I wouldn't have learned if I was pushing through. But it's my most difficult challenge. It's mine too. I have Aries in my head, midheaven and I see where I want to go right away and I just want to go there. And I realized that going there takes some time. Yeah, and uh, you know, you push the process and you, you're you sort of not allowing existence, you know, to teach you everything it wants to teach you. And it's, yeah. It's really, you can get a premature conclusion if you push it too fast. Yeah, or sort premature, of like a premature ejaculation. ejaculation, which ah, is you don't reach the pleasure. Yeah. And exactly. even with, you know, all the time in my workshops, people ask me questions that take the form of, you know, when I breathe, this happens. When I meditate, that happens. When I sleep, this happens. And it's always followed with, what does that mean? They want yeah, me to tell yes, it for yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. And I will never answer that question because I say, love the question. Ah. If I tell you what it means, oh, that means your third chakra is dominating your fourth chakra. You go, okay, and you put it away on a shelf. But if I say, what that means is you're having an experience go deeper into that experience and there's more information to harvest. It's a treasure. Yes, there. I if remember you're not that. in a hurry yes. for the answer. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. That is a very good point and I will remember it in my next workshop. And I'll say, Anodia says. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like you don't want to hurry to orgasm. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful state but you don't want to hurry there because all the process of getting there is fun too. Yeah. And... It gives you a richer and deeper experience. Yeah, and now I would like to conclude by something dear to my heart. We're all lucky enough in this uh, Western civilization here, in this abundant time for us, we're lucky enough to be able to cultivate our orgasmic consciousness. But what about the 1.8 million people on this planet every year that are being absconded to be taken as sexual slaves from the age of four years old to the age of 20 years old. Their passports are taken away. They're locked up in a brothel. They're raped 10 times a day until their spirit gives up. And they're basically used as, um, to be honest, fucking machines. And nobody cares about who the person is. And when they've been used long enough, they're discarded, they die in a corner with AIDS or whatever. And this is, this is actually the destiny of all the children that are the victims of war, of fights between tribes on borders, and that are just abandoned. And then they're reaped by the people who come to take them away in buses so that now they are fodder for sexual slavery. And there is no law controlling this. Okay? We need to donate to the organizations that are helping these children. And I know a few that are honest, that use the money well, and that they've helped these children all the way to the point where they could have a job that they had chosen, they could study, and they could be happy. And so at the end of my book, Love, Sex, and Awakening, there is an appendix where you are you know, invited to donate to these organizations who will then do the job and be helped to help another child get an education. So please think about that. And when you have pleasure and when you have a great time, dedicate it to the healing of all the women in the world that are being abused and all the men in the world that are being abused or, you know, taken away. Hope. That's a beautiful message. I know I give to Shared Hope, which is a local organization that tries to combat sex trafficking. It's a horrible thing that happens to something that's supposed to be sa uh, sacred, yeah. pleasurable, ecstatic, a spiritual experience, and when it's abused, it is just denigrated. Yeah. And that person is has wounds they carry forever. Yeah, so we're going to do it. We're going to save all the children. Hope. <laughs> Hope. <laughs> So if you were to sum up some of what the backbone of your work is, I mean, you teach these beautiful practices, you help people get ecstatic 
outside the stasis. You help them have beautiful experiences to connect. But I know you have a larger vision vision of your work and how it affects the world. Well, I would say that um, I have dedicated my work to the eradication of sexual ignorance on the planet. Because I believe and I see that in so many situations and cultures, sexual ignorance uh, is so rampant that people are abused and they are very unhappy. So, you know, I would say right now, for instance, that in some of the Arab countries or the Muslim countries, I've read three or four books by Muslim women who escaped to the West. And it's, um, you know, there's no respect for the feminine. You know, the woman belongs to her father, belongs to her brother, belongs to her husband. And there is no law at this point that, you know, changes the power of the male to take the woman in whichever way he wants. And so I say that, you know, honoring human rights are meaning also honoring feminine, women's rights. And I think we should think about that and move in that direction. So I would say that what makes me so happy is when I have a workshop such as the one that I just finished, where I had 50 people, 50 American people, this was a workshop I did in California, that learned about riding the wave of bliss, which is the advanced uh, segment of my work. These people were so happy and they were so appreciative of my presence there that they inspired me to really teach the best that I could teach. And so I saw that people from different races, uh, people that were from Oriental races, for people from Indonesia, black people, white people, people from uh, Native American uh, traditions and, um, you know, ancestry. Um, all these people were together and it didn't matter the color, the race, the religion. They honored each other as brothers and sisters and friends. And they had fun with each other. And they expanded their consciousness with each other. And it was, that's how the world should be. And that's why I'm working. And that's a beautiful vision. Yeah. I think that the denigration of sexuality and taking pleasure away from people helps to create violence. And if we want to combat a violent culture, we need to make more love and less war. Yes, absolutely. This is still a valid mantra. A valid mantra. Yeah. Let's see it happen. Yes. Oh, 